basic tools and equipment. At the end of this video, you will be able to state basic tools and equipment in tailoring and dressmaking. Introduction to tailoring and dressmaking. Sewing is a useful skill that is worth learning like cooking. Gladly, you can always repair clothes by sewing holes and mending them rightly. Moreover, you can design your own clothes as for the new trend in fashion. It's just not it. You will also improve your creativity in addition to saving time and money. But, before choosing your fabric or pattern, it's important that you have all the tools you need. There's nothing worse than starting your first dressmaking project and realizing that you are missing a crucial piece of equipment. So, you have to use the right tool for the right job in the right way. In this video, let's understand the basic tools and equipment used in tailoring and dressmaking. This could help you to choose the sewing tools you need and build your own sewing kit. Classification of Tailoring Tools Tools can be classified based on the tailoring needs and its principal applications which include measuring tools, drafting tools, marking tools, cutting tools, sewing tools. Now, let us see the types one by one. In measuring tools, a measuring tape is a flexible ruler and it is the major tool required for taking body measurements, patterns and layouts and as well as other general measurings. It has measures of an inch and centimeter only. Next, measuring stand. It is used to measure long garments like a long gown and overcoats. Similarly, a metal tape is made of flexible metal that is convenient in measuring form to figure. After measuring the body size, drafting your own sewing patterns will be your next step. Pattern making involves some drafting tools which are listed on the screen. Let us see their application in detail. L scale is made up of wood or iron. Its one arm is 12 inches in length and another is 24 inches in length. Another kind of L scale is graduated square where inch marks are given on the one side with half inch marks and are in the denomination of 1 by 4, 1 by 8 and 1 by 16. Whereas 24 inch marks are in denomination of 1 by 3, 1 by 6, 1 by 12, 1 by 24, and 1 by 48. Next, an important tool for measuring pleats, tucks, etc. is dressmaker's gauge. And the straight edges are used for measuring the buttonholes. In the same way, seam gauge is used to design and measure pleats and tucks and buttonholes respectively. There are some rulers made of transparent plastic which are used to read the markings easily. T-square is used for measuring the square of straight edges whereas the set square is for finding bias grain of the fabric. If you want to make a small draft in record notebooks then you could use the card scale. Some special tools are used for measuring curves. For example, Taylor's art curve, which has half a centimeter on the one side and that of a one-fifth centimeter on the other side. Next, French curve rulers are used to shape neck, armhole depth, side and bottom. The flexible curve can be bent into any shape of adjustments to curved patterns. However, hip curves or curve rulers can be used for drafting side shapes like shirt, pants, 
etc. Now, let us see the most common marking tools used in tailoring. Chiefly, tailor's chalks are for temporary marking on cloth and tracing papers to trace an image onto it. Likewise, tracing wheels for marking pleats, darts, buttonholes and packet placing. Also, a compass for marking curves in an umbrella frock. After marking, cutting is the next step. A typical scissor consists of handles with finger holes, blades with cutting edge, screw or rivet and plate. There are so many types of scissors for cutting and crafting. For example, paper shears have long pointed blades for cutting of thin papers. In contrast, tailor's shears are large and stable which is designed mainly to prevent smooth fabrics from slipping. Pattern shears can be used for cutting out pattern templates from thick cardboard. Pinking shears have a zigzag profile for a more attractive trimming. Buttonhole scissors have a special gap in the blades. This allows short cuts to be made inside the edge of the fabric. Embroidery scissors with handles, long, narrow and pointed blades are used to cut short and fine threads. Likewise, snippers are spring action blades used to trimming waste thread, removal of tackling stitches and opening of seams. Stitch cutters with hook edge and arrowhead are used for opening up machine-made buttonholes. An awl is used for rounding of button eyes or drawstring holes and for pulling out strings. Next, hole punch is used for making holes in cutting patterns. Likewise, revolving hole punch is used to make holes close to the edge of the fabric. Notcher is used to make various shapes according to requirements. Next, to cutting tools. Needles are the most important sewing tools for hand stitching as well as machine stitching. The various types of hand sewing and machine sewing needles are available and are shown on the screen. A needle for hand sewing has a hole called the eye at the non-pointed end to carry thread or cord. Needle rings are being defined by a number on the packet. Sewing needles are classified by their length and thickness. That is a size 3 needle will be thicker and longer, while size 9 will be shorter and finer. It will be chosen according to the characteristics of the material. The size of the sewing thread the type of seam and the stitch type. In contrast to hand sewing needles, machine needles have various sections as shown on the screen. There are two types of shank cross sections, namely circular and flattened. The shank locates the needle in the needle bar. There are also needles with curved blades which are used in blind stitch machines. This facilitates the passage of the hook into the loop and reduces the danger of missed stitches. Number metric NM of a needle defines the diameter of the blade at a point above the scarf. Fine needles have a size up about 70. Medium has 80 or 90 NM. Thick needles have greater than 110 NM. There are two types of needle points, namely round and cutting points. Also, round point needles have set points and ball points. In set points, slim set points used for fine, densely woven fabrics, whereas set cloth point is used to sew without damaging the material. Finally, the heavy set point is strongly blunted and used for a button sewing machine. Similarly, in ballpoints needles, 
light ball points are used for sensitive fabrics in order to prevent damage to the loops. But elastic materials can be sewn with medium or heavy ball points. Another type of needle point, that is, cutting point, has two types, such as left cutting point and spear point. These are exclusively used for sewing leather and laminated textiles. In hand sewing needles, embroidery and darning needles are particularly for thick materials. Generally, rounded needles are used for coarse material and pointed needles for finer needles. The final type of needle is pins. They are made up of steel or brass and may have plastic heads. The applications include component assembly, decoration and packing. The final type of needle is pins. They are made up of steel or brass and may have plastic heads. The applications include component assembly, decoration and packing. For effortless darning, you could use darning mushroom. The shock is stretched over the mushroom head and hold tightly for darning. Fabric tube turning is a sewing technique which can be simply done using loop tuner. Some other essential tools for sewing are cutting table, cutting board and pin cushion to sharpen, clean and hold pins. Moreover, you can have a dress form to get a three-dimensional view on the article of clothing that is being sewed. Needle threader helps to pull the thread through the eye of a needle. To avoid pin pricks, you can use thimble over the index or middle finger. Conclusion Thus, before you spend all of your money on new sewing gadgets and accessories, make sure you have the basic sewing tools. The stated items will help you get started, get you through sewing lessons and help you tackle beginner friendly sewing projects. Summary Thus in this lesson, you have learned that the tools can be classified based on the tailoring five principal applications which include measuring tools, drafting tools, marking tools, cutting tools, sewing tools. The most common measuring tools are listed on the screen. Drafting tools used for pattern making are listed on the screen. Marking tools are used to make temporary marks on the pattern. Cutting tools are used to get the desired shapes of a pattern. Sewing tools, including needles and others, are stated with their applications.